Hey cyberpunks, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Me and my friends started playing cyberpunk and I didn't really have a ton of terrain for it. And on our first session, I needed to represent an apartment building. I grabbed some of these shipping containers that I had made previously, stacked them up, made some footprint maps that I printed out from the internet and made a little apartment building. And these shipping containers turned out to be the perfect base for building you know, structures in Night City. Because as I read the lore, Turns out Night City was built using a ton of shipping containers, but I needed more. Rather than actually just making more shipping containers, I decided to make some shipping containers that actually had been turned into buildings with doors and windows and little things on them. And I am extremely happy with how well this system has turned out. It's exactly the kind of terrain I love. A simple system that is really, really modular and can be used in all sorts of different ways and is pretty darn easy to build. Since I already had some shipping containers made that I did in a previous build video, I made my buildings in the same form factor as these. This way they could be mixed together and stacked to create different layouts. Now the size doesn't actually matter as long as you pick a base size and stick with it. My existing containers were two and a half inch square on the ends and either five or 10 inches long. Now what makes this all work is having boxes that are made in increments of half and double lengths uh, and widths with each other. Essentially they should be able to stack together to create cubes. So I cut a bunch of foam core to the sizes that I needed to make boxes that were still two and a half inches tall, 10 inches long, but five inches wide. Basically two of the larger shipping containers slammed together. The actual size of each piece to make these cubes will depend entirely on how you order them in assembly and the thickness of the material you're using. It's best to make a top and a bottom the size that you want, and then choose an end and make one of the dimensions the same as the top or bottom, minus the thickness of two of the layers of your material. I hope that makes sense. The final size would have double material removed from each dimension. By working with a goal of a finished size and subtracting material thickness, this will allow you to use whatever material you want to construct these, because there's no reason that this can't be done out of cardboard for example, or if you want something really durable, MDF. I only made three of these this time around because I wasn't sure how well this idea would work. Now that I know, uh, when I do it again, I'll make quite a few of these uh, foundation boxes to work from, as this is really the most tedious and least enjoyable part of the process. So it'd be good to have a whole bunch of them just on hand, ready to go when you're feeling creative. The real fun part of building these is decorating them. I grabbed all sorts of papers, craft foams, and mesh that could cover the structures. I also gathered some random 3D elements, you know, things that I could use for doors, windows, and just general greebles. I was careful to select items that would stay pretty flush to the surface because these are meant to be arranged close together and having things project out a fair bit uh, could cause some issues when trying to put setups together. Now, if you don't have a collection of bits or kits and no 3D printer, a great way to get a bunch of things that uh, you could use would be chopping up cheap toys or uh, disassembling old electronics. Say you can find an old VCR for free. If you take that apart, there's gonna be a ton of interesting mechanical pieces and electrical components that you can glue onto these buildings to create a really cool look. The idea with these buildings is that they were once shipping containers. So I first decorated them with corrugated paper to match my existing containers. This does not need to be precise. Uh, in, in fact, you can use up scrap pieces, even change directions of the corrugation and mix materials. If it looks a little bit more ramshackle, it's just gonna look a little bit more believable as something that's been converted into living space over time. I don't mess around with hot glue or white glue for this. Hot glue isn't great for coverage of large flat areas and PVA is just too slow drying. So a humble glue stick really does the job well with one caveat. You gotta use the strongest glue sticks that you can find. I personally buy these Elmer's Extreme ones and I've never had any issues with the glue failing on them. I like them. I wanted some variety though and decided to do each of my three prototypes slightly differently. For the second one, I cut up strips of dollar store craft foam to create really clean looking panels. This resulted in three different finishes on the buildings but similar enough that they all looked like they existed in the same world, which is exactly what you want when creating a hive city environment. 
You want everything to look cohesive, but also thrown together from a bunch of different random things and not all exactly the same. The nice thing about the foam structures being covered in stuff like paper is that I could simply cut out areas to embed my 3D elements as needed. Some I cut in and some I just attach directly to the surface, de depending on how thick it was. It also helps if you can layer some elements here. If you have see-through frames, putting things like window screen, card stock, or mesh tape behind them will give them some really nice depth. And if later you want to add lights to the inside, having the windows cut out with some sort of mesh behind them will look great. Now, some of the larger, thicker bits like vending machines, which are basically a must have in a cyberpunk setting, I cut out the walls completely so that I could slide them right into the walls, making them just about flush, protruding just slightly. This retains some dimensionality while keeping the surface relatively smooth for placing things close together. And really, it just looks like the vending machines or whatever bits are built into the walls of the structure, which is really great. The downside to corrugated paper like this is that it's not very strong. You can crush it pretty easily, so a coat of Mod Podge is a must. This won't turn it rock hard, but it will stiffen it up enough that it's not going to easily crush and flatten out over time through normal use. Let's take a moment to talk about this video sponsor. Loot Studios have been releasing amazing fantasy miniatures for home printing for quite some time, and they quickly became one of the best in their field, and easily one of my favorites. Recently, they launched a second subscription service for monthly bundles of sci-fi oriented models. So if you're playing any sort of futuristic or sci-fi game and want some interesting characters or maybe some unique proxies for armies, these sets have a lot of cool stuff going on. And it's not just one style of sci-fi. There are themes and elements and inspiration from all over the place. Some of the models have a Star Wars vibe, some a kind of horrific Event Horizon style, some look right at home on the streets of a cyberpunk city, and some are just creatures of alien worlds. The best part about this is that a ton of the models aren't covered in tech, meaning they can be used in fantasy settings as well. Even if you don't play anything sci-fi, there's plenty of new interesting monsters here that you can drop into a game of D&D, and they make that really easy to do by by including 5th edition stats every month. There's some pretty epic multi-part models and everything comes pre-supported in 32 millimeter and 75 millimeter scales. And if you're joining up for the first time, you'll also get access to a huge welcome pack of models and start earning towards their loyalty rewards that drop every few months of your subscription. I'll put a link to their site so you can jump on board. I promise you won't regret it. Before painting, I applied some Vallejo texture paste to simulate some crusty rust texture. This has the advantage of making the edges and corners a lot stronger and better sealed. I definitely went overboard on this, not in a way that caused any harm, but in the future, I think I'd take some time to apply this more minimally in thinner strips when working on stuff in this theme, as I don't think it should be quite as decayed as something in say a post-apocalyptic wasteland. But this really does depend on the vibe you're going for. One issue with stack these is that it made no sense for the doors on the upper ones. A simple way to solve this problem is with some flat platform sandwiched between the boxes to create walkways. I already had these that I made for my last game with some great maps that I got from Two Minute Tabletop. I had gotten these printed out at Staples on some heavy cardstock and glued them to foam core. I likely wouldn't use these maps again, so I figured, hey, why not just reuse them as a surface here? But they needed some texture to help with painting. They also needed to stay uniformly flush. I used some drywall mesh tape on the perimeters to create a nice grid looking walkway and simply applied some construction paper in the middle, which was basically the footprint of the buildings. But the edges still left a bit to be desired. I ended up cladding them in zip ties. You know, they're nice and stiff and straight and will really protect the foam edges, but they also have a really good texture on them that's perfect for representing some kind of metal framing. I also wanted some walkways to bridge gaps between buildings. So with my last existing floor plan, I ended up cutting it up into two strips the same size as my 10 inch shipping containers. This way they stayed in the same form factor as the set and could also be used between those containers to make up height differences if needed. To prime these, I went with the darkest brown spray primer I had on hand, which unfortunately was pretty glossy, but still a better choice than black given that I wanted to do a paint chipping effect. Now, when I did my 
previous shipping containers, I used hairspray as chipping medium and it, and it worked all right. But a little while ago, I was at a hobby store and I picked up some proper chipping medium to see if it would work better. It was too thick to spray with my airbrush and I wasn't sure if thinning it down would affect how it worked. So I just brushed it on and let it dry. Now my first coat of paint was a basic gray, but I followed this by some fun airbrush work. Instead of doing a zenithal highlight, I used white ink to color in all the spaces that weren't covered in texture. This was a good way to practice my general airbrush control, which still isn't great, but practicing on something like this where precision doesn't really matter is a really good opportunity. I used some painter's tape to make some very quick masks to do some basic stripes uh, with more white ink. For how simple this is, it was really satisfying to do. Then with a variety of inks and neon paints, I went to town painting different sections in different colors. I wanted these to look like they had layers of paint on them, applied at different times, and maybe were repaired with materials from different containers as well. And doing different colors gave everything a bit of a funhouse look that under some grime would look right at home in my Night City setting. This was also an opportunity to practice freehanding some symbols with the airbrush. I just used red ink to improvise some vaguely Japanese looking characters. When doing symbols and writing on terrain, I personally prefer to avoid using actual alphabets or characters from Earth or certain settings and instead try to emulate a vibe with meaningless symbols. This wasn't perfect, but I was really happy with how they came out. It totally looked believable enough as spray painted elements. Once that was all good and dry, I could use some water to rehydrate the chipping medium and start messing things up. This chipping medium is really meant for more delicate and precise modeling, not necessarily to just attack with so much water and brushes in such a chaotic way, but for terrain, you wanna be able to do things quick in bulk. You gotta be able to bang out steps. And while the chipping may have ended up a bit messier than some might like, it looked just fine for my purposes and also looked pretty similar to the chipping that I had done on my old containers. So similar, I think that in the future, I'll just stick with the hairspray method and save the chipping medium for smaller details. I wanted to dress up the walkways with some geometric neon pattern. So I just used some masking tape to create an interesting grid. One of these days, I got to get around to buying some rolls of masking tape in various thin widths, but I haven't yet. So I just used a piece of balsa wood to cut equal strips. Not the most precise or efficient method, but it got the job done. For some smaller characters on the building, I used a white paint pen. I find them a lot easier for me to control than a brush with my shaky hands. And the paint is opaque enough that it actually covers decently in one pass. And since I wasn't sure how oil washes would react with the chipping medium, you know, possibly fine, but I, I didn't know, I, I gave everything a coat of varnish at this point to lock everything in. And when it came to the oil washes, I was so absorbed in the moment that I failed to properly focus my camera. But trust me when I say, I used a bunch of different colors, both gritty browns and bright oranges and blues and purples to splotch on all over the place and give even more color depth in the finish. Just subtle variety. Using some paint thinner, I could wipe away the washes on high points and bring back some of the bright edges. And with that, these pieces were done. And I'm hell happy with how this idea came together. It's simple, effective, repeatable, and I can't wait to add to it in the future. Night City, baby, here we come. That's it, that's all. I am so excited about this little set here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Let me know in the comments section below. Hopefully this brings you some solid, good, you know, inspiration for your own cities for Cyberpunk, Necromunda, whatever you might play. If you wanna grab some tools or supplies and help support the production of these videos in the process, you can do so by doing your shopping on blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page where I list and link to all of the stuff I use regularly. There's another great, even better, way you can help me in this channel out though and that's by supporting the channel on patreon i'd love to have you as the newest member of the black magic craft fellowship cheers see you next video do